Imagine a six-year-old child, backpacks strapped on, making their way to school alone. This is not a scene from a movie, but a typical morning in Japan. In the land of the rising sun, it's an everyday sight to see children, some as young as six, commuting to school without any adult supervision. It's a cultural norm deeply ingrained in the fabric of Japanese society, a stark contrast to the school drop-off lines we often see in many Western countries. Why is this the case, you might wonder? Well, it's a blend of cultural expectations, societal trust, and practicality. Japanese society places a great emphasis on independence and self-reliance from a young age. Plus, the country's low crime rate and comprehensive safety measures create an environment that fosters such independence. Let's look at some numbers for perspective. A whopping 82% of Japanese children walk to school alone by the time they are in the fourth grade. That's nearly every child in the age group making their way through busy intersections, across picturesque bridges, and around bustling marketplaces, all on their own. This doesn't just happen overnight, though. It's a gradual process where children start by taking short, supervised walks, then gradually increase their distance and decrease their supervision. The children are also well-equipped with a network of local shopkeepers and older students looking out for them, creating a community-wide safety net. In addition to this, the country's meticulous urban planning plays a significant role. From well-marked pedestrian paths to traffic lights that play melodies for the visually impaired, the infrastructure is designed keeping safety as a priority. The result? a generation of young people who are not just confident and resilient, but also incredibly aware of their surroundings. It's a daily exercise in problem solving and decision making, preparing these young minds for the challenges of the future. Japanese children are setting out on their own journeys from a young age, a testament to the country's safety and the trust within its communities. This is not just a commute, it's a lesson in self-reliance and responsibility. That's the heart of the matter when it comes to Japanese children tackling their daily journey to school alone. Here's the thing. These solo treks are not just about getting from point A to point B. They're a stepping stone to adulthood, a hands-on course in responsibility, independence, and confidence building. Imagine the sense of achievement a six-year-old feels after successfully navigating through bustling city streets or quiet country lanes all on their own. But don't just take my word for it. Let's consider the words of a respected child psychologist, Dr. Hiroki Asano. He says, The daily journey to school in Japan serves as a powerful tool for children to learn and practice responsibility and independence. It's a tangible representation of the trust society places in them. Contrast this with a typical Western scenario. In many parts of the world, children are often chauffeured to school, their journey carefully overseen by adults. While this approach certainly has its merits, it's hard to deny that it doesn't offer the same opportunities for confidence and independence, building that the Japanese model does. In Japan, the world is a classroom. The journey to school is a lesson. The destination is the reward. And the result? Young individuals who are self-assured, responsible, and ready to take on the world one step at a time. It's not always easy, of course. There are challenges to face, decisions to make, and problems to solve. But that's the beauty of it. These children are learning that they are capable, that they can trust themselves, and that they can handle whatever comes their way. And when these young navigators finally arrive at school, their backpacks are not just filled with books and lunchboxes, they're packed with valuable life lessons and a growing sense of self-worth. These solo journeys are more than just a way to school. They're a childhood rite of passage, preparing Japanese children for the future. A young child's first solo errand is not just a milestone, but a televised event in Japan. 
Meet First Errand, a heartwarming Japanese television show that has captured the hearts of millions since its inception. Each week, this show documents the adventures of young children, usually around six to seven years old, running errands all by themselves for the first time. Whether it's buying groceries, delivering a letter, or picking up a sibling from school, these tasks are transformed into thrilling exploits that keep viewers on the edge of their seats. But First Errand is more than just an entertainment spectacle. It's a mirror reflecting the deep rooted societal norms and cultural ethos of Japan. The show is a testament to the profound trust that Japanese society places in its young ones and the safety measures that are firmly embedded within the community. Imagine a society where parents, neighbors, shopkeepers, and even strangers come together to ensure the safety and well being of a child on an errand. It's not some idyllic fiction, but the reality of life in Japan. The show portrays how the community collectively keeps an eye on these young adventurers, subtly guiding and protecting them without stifling their independence. The show also highlights the importance of teaching children about responsibility from a young age. As viewers, we see these young children meticulously counting out change, carefully crossing streets, and politely interacting with adults. It's a beautiful illustration of how Japanese society nurtures responsibility and self reliance in its youth. First, Aaron also gives us a glimpse into the unique bond between Japanese children and their parents. It showcases the parents' gentle guidance, their trust in their children's abilities, and their pride in their children's achievements. In many Western societies, the idea of a six year old running an errand alone might be unthinkable. But in Japan, it's a rite of passage, a shared experience that binds the community and fosters a sense of independence and responsibility in children. In Japan, a child's first solo errand is not just an achievement, but a celebration of independence. So, what can we take away from Japan's young solo commuters? Well, it's clear that Japan's practice of letting children commute alone isn't just about getting to school. It's a tradition that fosters independence, responsibility, and confidence from a young age. It's about taking that first step towards adulthood, towards becoming a contributing member of society. Remember the adventures of the first errand show, those brave little souls running errands alone, navigating the bustling streets of Japan. It's more than entertainment. It's a reflection of the deep rooted trust and security within Japanese society. Compared to Western societies where children are often closely supervised, Japan's approach may seem unusual, but the evidence speaks for itself. The statistics show lower rates of child-related incidents, and higher levels of self-reliance among Japanese youth. In the land of the rising sun, a child's journey to school is a journey towards independence, a testament to a culture that values self-reliance and responsibility from an early age.